HDR is a very popular technique for handling scenes with such a high brightness range that the camera can't capture the full range of tones. You can adjust the exposure to record details in the shadows or to capture details in highlights, but you can't have both. Here's a scene that demonstrates this pretty effectively. The first shot is exposed more for the shadows. The second shot captures the highlights. And if we set an exposure somewhere in the middle for this third shot, we don't really see much detail in either. The solution here is to merge these three exposures together. And that's what HDR software does. And HDR merge tools are built right into Affinity Photo. We start with the File New HDR Merge menu command. This opens a new HDR merge panel where we add the images we want to merge together. Our example is pretty simple. It's just a set of three bracketed exposures about two EV apart. This is easy enough to do on practically any camera. Once the images are added, there are some other options in this panel. We make sure that the automatically align images box is checked because we shot this bracketed sequence and held. So there will be some small camera movement between the frames. We won't bother with the automatically remove ghost box in this example because nothing moved between the frames. But if you have a lot of pedestrians moving traffic or blowing leaves in the scene, this can make HDR images trickier and the remove ghosts feature can help. We don't really want the noise reduction box because we're using JPEGs, which have already had noise reduction applied in camera. This is really for best results with raw files. Finally, we do want to check the Tone Map HDR image box. Now we're ready to hit the OK button to start the merge process, where it first aligns the images and then merges them and applies tone mapping. Our merged image automatically appears in the tone mapping persona, ready for our HDR adjustments. Tone mapping is an intrinsic part of the HDR process, and it's the way the software compresses a very wide range of tones into a narrower range that can be viewed on screen, shared and printed. You'll see that there's a tone compression slider at the top of the tools panel on the right hand side of the screen, and it's set to 100 by default. If you drag this slider to the left and to the right, you'll get an idea of how it works. High values maximize the tonal compression to really even up the extremes of brightness, but they also flatten the contrast. You can fix this with the local contrast slider directly below. This gives objects a much punchier look, though if you increase the slider beyond about 30%, then you do get that characteristic HDR look, which may or may not be what you want. If you want a natural looking result, Try balancing the tone compression and local contrast sliders until the image looks right. Alternatively, you can save a lot of time using the presets in the left sidebar. These apply different combinations of slider settings to produce a whole range of effects. They come in three categories, default, extreme, crazy, and James Ritson customs. These presets use many of the other adjustments in the right sidebar, and we can take a closer look at some of those now. First, you should be aware that small adjustments in the exposure panel can have a big effect. So keep an eye on the histogram display at the top of the panel. The enhance panel is very useful for contrast, saturation, and vibrance adjustments. Below this is the white balance panel for changing the image's color temperature and tint. Next is the Shadows and Highlights Adjustment Panel, which you'll probably find more useful if you've merged RAW files rather than JPEGs. RAW files contain a higher brightness range and respond a little better to editing when merged, and are preferred by many HDR fans. However, as long as you capture a wide enough brightness range with a bracketed set of JPEGs, these can work well too. You can think of the Detail Refinement Panel as being a kind of sharpening tool, Though if you've used the local contrast slider, you might already have all the sharpening effects you need. And right at the bottom is a curves panel, which works in just the way you would expect in regular photo editing. 
it's useful for this photo where a low key look is really needed to bring out the colors. All of these panels can be disabled or enabled by clicking their checkboxes. This lets you quickly switch adjustments on or off to compare their effects while editing and to see what adjustments have been applied by any Affinity Photo HDR presets you use. But that's not all. The Tone Mapping Persona also enables you to carry out local adjustments, and this is done using the Overlays tab on the Tools panel. By default, only the master image is selected, but let's say we decide the sky in this shot is just a little too bright, and we want to tone it down with the graduated filter effect. To do this, we just click the Add Gradient Overlay button at the bottom of the panel, then drag downwards from the top of the sky. To darken the sky, we need to switch back to the Tone Map tab, and here we'll just make an adjustment to the curve. This is where you'll see the benefit of merging RAW files rather than JPEGs, incidentally, as we have to be careful to avoid creating a banding effect in the sky. We can also experiment a little with the white balance. You can add multiple overlays as required, and there's a regular brush tool for more precise adjustments. Just remember though, that you must select the master overlay in a panel to make global HDR adjustments. But that's not the end. The tone mapping persona is useful for single images, not just bracketed exposures. Very often you can capture the full brightness range of a scene in a single RAW file. And your main problem is how to make it look effective, not merging separate exposures. The process is just the same, except that this time you can select just a single RAW file in the new HDR merge window. Affinity Photo will still go through the same merge process, even though there's nothing to merge in this instance, and will open the image in the tone mapping persona as before. The alternative approach is to open your raw image in the develop persona first to make any adjustments, then transfer it to the tone mapping persona, which can be useful when your lenses rely on digital correction profiles. The point is that the tone mapping persona makes really light work of high brightness range images, bringing out shadows and highlights while preserving a very natural look. So the message is that the tone mapping persona is not just for HDR. Affinity Photo can merge bracketed exposures extremely effectively, but the tone mapping persona is what gives them their unique quality, and this can work just as effectively on regular images, merged or not. To find out more about Affinity Photo, visit affinity.serif.com.